Hey guys, it's Andrew here. Today we are going to talk about special sets and intervals. Alright, so we are going to first discuss the set of all integers, which is represented by this funky looking capital Z. We just add this extra line and we see that we have this collection of negative and positive numbers. But these numbers have no necessary decimal expansion or fractional part. We don't want slices of numbers in this set, we want all of a number. So just to kind of elaborate on what's not in this set, right? Something like 3.2 or 1.5, which, you know, if we think about money, right? Let's say that we're dealing with, you know, $3.23, right? That would not be in this set, right? But if we want to think about these quantities as, you know, as money, then something like $3, which is the same thing as just $3, right, represented this way, that would be in this set. And then if we want to talk about debt in terms of money, okay, well, okay, let's say that someone is negative $532 in debt, right? That wouldn't be in this set. Whereas something like, okay, they're negative $627 in debt, right? That would be in this set. Of course, though, we're not going to slap on a money sign in this set, just trying to get the idea of a cross as to what will, what will actually be in here. Our friends, the integers. Okay, so we can now discuss our next two special sets from the set of all integers, with the set of negative integers being represented by z negative, right, our special z to this minus sign, uh, and the set of positive integers, which we can represent as the special z to this positive sign, or, you know, z plus, right? So the set of positive integers, z plus, set of negative integers, z minus, and then we just kind of have our zero hanging out in the middle there. Don't worry, we can, we can throw this into another special set. Now, using some more sophisticated notation, we can represent the set of all integers as the set of negative integers unioned with the set containing zero, unioned with the set of positive integers. And that leads us to our next special set, which is the union of the set containing zero and the set of positive integers. We call it the natural numbers or the set of whole numbers or the set of non-negative numbers. Well, integers. All right, so before we move on to our next special set, I just thought it would be nice to have all of the integer sets kind of lined up just as a little review, right? So we just learned that the set of all integers is the set of all of these, all of these positive and negative numbers, right? On this branch, right, from 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, right? These non-negative numbers, we call those the whole numbers. So without zero, just slap a negative onto these whole numbers and we get these negative numbers, right? But they're all whole. We have no fractional or decimal pieces. And you know, from there, we can derive or introduce the definition of the set of all negative integers, the C minus which is just the set of these negative quantities. And same for the set of positive integers, 
right, this set of positive quantities. And finally, the natural numbers represented by this n, um, which is the set containing 0, union, the set of positive integers. Or we can just say 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, or the set of non-negative integers. Okay, so our next special set, which we represent by this special Q, I, I'm sure you've been seeing the trend of just, you know, these extra lines. Um, and we, we call this the set of rational numbers. It looks a bit heady, this kind of set, but it's not so bad. Um, we have that this is the set of quantities of the form P divided by Q, such that, that's what this line represents, uh, and I'll show another representation for some other sets, um, such that P and Q belong to the set of integers. So we know that these quantities have, you know, these quantities P and Q have no, um, no, un no necessary decimal expansion. And we also have the added constraint that Q can't equal zero because in mathematics it doesn't make any sense to divide by zero. At some point I might make a video discussing that, but for now just take this, take this in the definition. So let's just talk about some easy examples, right? We can talk about three halves or five halves, or eight thirds, right? And we can represent this on a number line, just to kind of get an idea, right? So we have one, we have two, we have three, right? We have these integers that we can list out pretty easily. And so if we think about three halves, well, that's halfway to 2. We got 1.5, so that would be smack dab in the middle right here. So we see it's not, it's not whole. Right? We see that we have a necessary uh, decimal piece. And then if we talk about 5 halves, well, that's going to be halfway point between 2 and 3. So I'll write that here first. We have 2.5, right? And then if we talk about 8 thirds, well, that one's a little harder to represent as a fraction. So, or sorry, as a decimal. So I'll just put it as a fraction here. That is going to be um, 1 third less than 3. So we can forget about the 4. Um, and we can say 8 thirds resides here. Okay? But we see that they don't equal these, these whole quantities, right? And we can have a plethora of these rational numbers in between any of these integers. The last thing I'd like to mention about the set of rational numbers is that the set of integers is a subset of the set of rational numbers. It is contained because even though I was giving examples before of non-integers, we can represent all integers as fractions, right? 4 over 2 equals 2. 6 over 6 equals 1. 6 over 2 equals 3. 36 divided by 12 equals 3, and so on and so forth. All right. So the next special set that we're going to discuss looks 
a bit less tangible than the set of rational numbers. And there are plenty more irrational numbers than there are rational numbers. Um, but an easy way to think about a rational number is just it has a never-ending decimal expansion. So it can't actually be represented as a fraction, though it can certainly be approximated depending on rounding. So, um, you know, some prime examples of rational numbers are, you know, what is it, Euler's quantity, which is 2.7132, and it just keeps going and going and going. And we also have pi, right, which is 3.14. 1592, and so on and so forth ad finitum, right? But so we see that, you know, unless we approximate, these are impossible to represent as fractions. So, you know, this set that reads alpha, and now we have this colon, which also represents such that, like this line here did, um, or well, the line for the set of rational numbers set, um, we have alpha such that alpha does not belong to the set of rational numbers. So we're just ditching all fractions. So the next set that we can discuss is the set of real numbers, which we can also call the continuum. And this basically encompasses all, all of these numbers that we can work with. Um, so we define this as x, such that x belongs to the union of rational and irrational numbers. 